now you should be able to hear me. Uh, first of all, Robin, awesome presentation. I like their stuff. Uh, Mika and Adam, I guess you will like my video that I will try to show. Um, and Adam, by the way, I really see uh, an insane big potential in uh, female hockey because um, we do a lot with the German Hockey Federation. Yeah, so also from my side, thanks for, for having me. Uh, I'm really fortunate to, to be here to speak to that awesome group of uh, coaches. This presentation will be a little bit different because I will start off different um, and I will put in some abstract uh, examples to keep the attention high. And I would like to make you curious to learn more from us. And I'm also curious about your opinion afterwards uh, about our solution. Um, I'm happy to talk to you about tracking performance and tactics as a combined solution uh, together with Dartfish in professional ice hockey. And there's real time written and you will see it right now because that was not different. Uh, and Jan, you will like it. Um, I just change uh, the screen and the ball has to wake up. Um, I have to change the, the screen. I have to stop sharing, right? Yeah. And I have to share again. Yes. There it is. Uh, when we talk about real time, we prove real time. And what you see here is our connected ball um, that will be used uh, at the upcoming uh, championship in Germany. On the x axis, there's the time flying by. On the y-axis, there's the g-force. And I will make the scale a little bit different. Um, and that's what we call the heartbeat of the ball. And today, it's the heartbeat of hockey. Um, and you see that ball is pretty sensitive. And I will change the scale one more time to show you how sensitive it is. And especially when I throw it into the air, it goes down to um, zero uh, because then the free fall happens. And if I just ha hold it in my hand, um, we're at one G, which is 9.81 square meters per second. And with that detection, we detect the touches and then we align it with the video feed uh, from the video assistant referee. Takeaway message for now is, Real time is possible. Yeah, quick question. Anytime. It's just G force, no rotation. Uh, that is um, spin rate uh, and touches based on the IMU. And then we simply sync it with um, a master clock. And then the FIFA or UEFA will draw the line way much more accurate. And we've done it in Qatar, New Zealand, and Australia, bunch of other FIFA events, and now with the UEFA. Um, that's an insane cool tool. Uh, you may think which guy is standing in front of you with shorts. Um, my name is Michi Emma. I'm a sports scientist uh, with a specialization for pro sports. I'm a former goalie, and I have 10 years experience within ice hockey as an SNC coach, SNC goalie coach, goalie coach, analytics guy, assistant coach within several teams. Six years ago, my son got born, and then I simply tried to find a normal job. Um, and since six years, I'm with Kinexon, and I'm responsible for our partner teams when they have data-related questions, dashboards, interpreting data, uh, regarding the application, feedback, and so on and so forth. And 
I'm very driven to help teams and athletes out there all over the world. And I've highlighted just a few logos here because within my 10 years of coaching, I've experienced a lot of great events. The EHF uh, 2016 uh, World Cup, where I was the goalie coach for the German national team. Mannheim, which is an insane hockey town. Robin, you may don't like this logo. <laughs> That's just love I uh, Also experienced within uh, different countries. And Nuremberg, because we've played the first outdoor game in front of 50,000 people. Uh, I want to thank one specific guy, and that's Quirin Sönlein, that's the head of performance from Lausanne uh, HC uh, and the Sun Hockey Club, because you will see some data from them. And Quirin is also a big part why this product combination between Kinex and Sports and Dartfish got established and that we, that we started um, together. There's also a research project involved, and you will uh, check out the university afterwards. Um, very smart guy. If you, because I've talked to him that morning, if you want to know more about practical aspects from this product combination, you can reach out to him at any time. He's very open, very smart guy, very uh, innovative. I really like him a lot. Um, for me, I have to put that away. Hockey has changed. Um, and the analytics has to adopt as well. Um, you may know uh, the evolution of, of goalies and due to the fact that I'm a former goalie, I put those two pictures in. It's a pretty old goalie, ugly gear, no protection for the, uh, for the hat. And then uh, you see the guy from Edmonton um, and just compare those two pictures and how many space they put away. And that's for me like two great pictures who display the evolution of hockey. And now there's the abstract uh, example that that you guys may like. And that's a little video. Um, if some of you have been at Madison, Wisconsin 2017 at the Network Goaltending Symposium, Rob Tallis, the goalie coach from Florida, used that video. And from that point on, I know whenever I do a conference, this video has to be. But Holland comes in for a pit stop. Time to refuel and change tires. Lou Moore himself changes the tires. They got the guy to Only play. four crew members, including the driver, are allowed to work on the car. It's a tense time. Holland stays in his seat, anxious to get away. Let's watch. Tires are changed at last. A crewman polishes the windshield as Holland moves away just 67 seconds after he stopped. Um, learnings from back then uh, and today for me that I took out from that video and those learnings can be applicable for hockey is the following. Back then, four people have been involved, including the driver, pure manual effort uh, and bad tools. Remember the guy top right with the hammer. Uh, that leads to a long pit stop slash longer analytics when we applied that to hockey um, because the game was different. Um, versus today, I've counted those guys. They were plus 20 people, awesome tools, automated processes. 
which lead them to a faster pit stop or very fast pit stop. The world record, by the way, is at the moment at 1.8 seconds. And we can apply a lot of those points um, to today's hockey analytics. From our point of view, why do we have to manage data, record data, and analysis data? Um, the first point is, for us, keep an rational approach within the emotional game of hockey. When you have played at the finals, um, emotion just going nuts overall. Um, so keep it rational within an emotional game of hockey. May you follow the, the Stanley Cup playoffs. It's also very emotional. Um, for us, it's also a fair judgment for the players because we have a look on numbers. Um, and the third point, and I don't want to jump very deep into the, the last point, but you can also help, help spectators and fans to get a better understanding of the game. Also, your head coaches, assistant coaches, and so on and so forth, because we underline it with, with numbers. How do we do that? Um, Raimund, my colleague, has touched it a little bit. Uh, we're using the local positioning system. Uh, shortcut is, is LPS. I see those blue boxes on the LED band. Um, and with that, we span like an, our own environment into a facility. Uh, the players were in sensor. And then we simply put a coordinate system onto the uh, playing field. And then we can track in real time, and you've experienced real time before, the X and Y coordinate uh, plus all the IMU data um, from the athletes uh, as soon as they are on the ice. At the bottom, you see some hard facts. And because this is not enough, we've added, I'm sorry that you're unable to see it at, on top. Uh, there are the four camera boxes from Dartfish. And as soon as we've made that step, we have been able to combine the benefits from both technologies into one system. The accuracy from the local positioning system and all the capabilities that Dartfish is offering were regarding puck and stick tracking um, also in real time, then we combine the performance stuff and the tactical stuff. Jean Sebastian uh, summed it up with one very good phrase. It's like um, Dartfish is seeing the puck and we're hearing the rest, and then we bring everything together. Um, that's the university that I've touched a little bit. If you're familiar with a university ranking, the EPFL is pretty high up in the world. Uh, and there's uh, the research project that is going on. And together with the EPFL, we're continuously developing this product forward to gain more output for you as an analytics coach or as a coach in general. Some examples. Um, I tried to keep it as practical as, as possible. The next stuff that you will see is highly individualized, and you will see a lot of data from LHC inside and that's also a very Im important point and very important take home message it, it it's an individualizable solution for you at the end of the day so the first example goes highly towards uh performance metrics um that is yeshi sekaj and we have like created a little spider web to compare him against the complete team um and kirin the snc coach um, he runs that kind of dashboard all the time to have a good overview um, of his players during the season at every single point of the season. Um, you can change that metrics at any given time. You can put, uh, put pass accuracy, puck possession, and, and all that stuff that our solution uh, uh, brings at the end of the day. Um, and you can create very good and, and awesome insights. Um, that's a Power BI dashboard. Um, top left is time on ice total for all those guys. Top right, uh, on the right hand side, there is um, passing efficiency from uh, the LHC team uh, displayed over every period. From my point of view, a pretty interesting metric um, because you want to have the guys out there who can pass the puck once at the right time and then also on the blade from, uh, from his colleague. Uh, and then um, Bottom left, uh, again, a distribution of the time on ice um, highlighted in different colors from the team 
over the game. This what you will see here will be um, updated uh, frequently during the game. So again, the real time aspect uh, will come into such a dashboard. Um, the rink displays turnovers. And at the bottom, you see puck possession. Does someone listen to the NHL um, podcast at the rink? No, in the latest episode, there was one very cool quote. Um, and it's actually not, not that uh, hard to get, but they mentioned uh, you can get penalties when you don't have to puck. And there was, especially in the series, um, Florida against New York, uh, New York got a lot of penalties. Um, so they're awesome. Uh, PP doesn't pay that much. Um, but Florida had way much more to puck. And that's like an easy solution at the end of the day. So for me, puck possession is an important uh, metric. And you will hear way much more about, uh, about possession and all that stuff and uh, winning capabilities tomorrow in the research talks. Um, shot momentum, again, Kinexon is not able to track the puck, but together with Dartfish, we're able. Um, and then we bring it together uh, for a shot momentum, uh, classic shot location map, uh, distribution of a period, shot outcome, uh, and based on the team strength. Um, that's the one game that Raimu touched at the beginning, uh, where we have tracked both teams. That's another um, UI. Uh, and on this UI, we're able to bring the performance statistics together with the tactic statistics from Dartfish. To sum it up, we're really doing our best to get away from that one dimensional data in such a complex sport. Um, from our point of view, the analytics at the moment are heavily based on shot attempts, shot location, and so on and so forth. That's for us one dimensional, and we want to open that up to more dimensions. That's why we bring in performance data combined with puck data, bringing together the best from both solutions or from both, both worlds, sensor-based and optical. Um, as I mentioned before, I showed the examples, the output can be fully individualized. I think that's really interesting for you guys. And last but not least, the evolution, talk and technology will lead to an adjusted analysis in the future. That's our thesis. I think you've experienced that. I'm done. And I just can say thank you or taksamiket. Thank you, Michael. Um, we will have a panel afterwards, so we'll be able to, I'll be able to ask questions and the, everyone will be able to ask questions later on. So thank you.